Hey, good afternoon guys. Nomad Brad here in Yuma, Arizona. And I wanted to take today to film a quick bus tour of my 2000 Ford Power Stroke 7.3 liter turbo diesel shuttle bus. Uh, I've had it for a few months now and the interior is about 90% complete and I've had a lot of people asking about it. And so I wanted to take this time to go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so kind of hop up in here where the light is a little better. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do a quick tour. Um, the bus, when I got it, it was a 10 passenger shuttle bus. So there was uh, there were rows of seats here going all the way back. And then the very back area was a wheelchair ramp. And, uh, and then this seat, this is an original seat. And then there was also one seat right next to it. So it started out as a complete shuttle bus and I converted it, uh, took me Took me a couple months overall uh, working on it, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys my setup. I have, uh, and there's a lot going on, and I'm going to be posting individual videos of the build out just because there's so much, um, there's so much that went into it, and that I just, I, there's no way I can explain everything on one tour. It'd be a 45 minute video, and nobody wants to watch that. <laughs> so, anyway, um, but this whole wall here, uh, I, there's insulation behind it, and then this is uh, one big panel here, one big panel here. Uh, it's got some kind of some uh, fiber board from Home Depot that I used to kind of create. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a wall that had kind of a modern contemporary look um, instead of the wood. A lot of people are doing like pine and oak and, you know, the natural outdoor vibe with their bus, which I get it. And, you know, I think that's cool. And Definitely appreciate being in nature, but I wanted to do something different. So you'll notice uh, there's a lot of aluminum and stainless steel and white in my bus. A little bit different, but so this is my computer station. Um, it was important to me because I most of my the work I do is on a computer, so it was important, you know, for me to have a dedicated uh, workstation, which is what this is. And so I also have uh, I built a little sliding window pocket door here, so that when I'm working depending where I'm at, if I want to, I can just slide this open and I can look outside. Like right now, look at that. It's a beautiful view. I would, uh, you know, if I was doing some editing today, I would totally just sit there and, you know, look out the window, watch the uh, birds fly by and just get creative. And, uh, so I absolutely love my workstation for that. So, and, uh, the sliding door piece, it's actually drawer hinges, like on a kitchen drawer, There's, it's, but they're up on their side. So there's one drawer hinge down here and one drawer hinge up here, and then this piece of wood in the middle. So anyway, it worked out pretty good. Um, and then I got my workstation. I have this little, uh, see if you can see it, this little adjustable computer stand, uh, laptop stand. And so that allows me, that allows me to adjust the angle of the laptop and, uh, you know, depending on what I'm doing or if I'm watching video or editing video, I can adjust the uh, height of it. So that's a great spot to work. Um, it's got a little pass through right here, which goes down underneath this cubby and it goes over to all my electrical. So I put all my electrical down here. Um, you know, I lived in a van before this bus. And so I realized, um, you know, it's kind of important to have all your electrical accessible where you can look at it see what's going on. And then if you need to, you know, make any adjustments. So I went with all the Ren Renogy equipment. Uh, it's got the Renogy Rover, uh, for actually, I think this is the 30 amp. Yeah. 30 amp MPPT charge controller, uh, right here. It's got a fused distribution block. So, you know, all the, all my individual components, the power comes in from the battery to the fuse block. And then from the fuse block, it goes out to each component. So like the fan, uh, the refrigerator, all my USB stuff, everything's separated here and it's got fuses so I can fix that if I need to, uh, 2000 watt Renogy inverter. And then up front here, I have, uh, a double USB charger. I have a separate voltmeter, um, so I can glance and see what the battery voltage is. It's a lot easier to look at this, especially at night cause it glows versus trying to look in and read the voltage off the charge controller, but you can see I am, I am charging right now. And then it's also got a cigarette lighter port on it. So that's kind of a cool little piece I got off Amazon. Just cut that in. And uh, these two upper cubbies are pretty empty right now. I keep my instant pot in this one. 
And then this whole piece, by the way, I built that all by hand. Um, I routered the face of this and I, I built this out of two by fours and then plywood. You can see this, this is two by four. And then this is half inch plywood, each of these bases. So anyway, this one's kind of empty. This one's got all my food in it. It's got fruits and veggies and some coffee. This is from my mom from the Virgin Islands. And, uh, and then over here, it's got more food stuff, potatoes. I got some, uh, rechargeable batteries, some melon, other stuff. Um, and then I have little cubbies in the bottom as well that I can just store stuff. So I got some canned goods down here, some peanut butter. Um, so lots of storage. Storage is pretty important. So I got all my storage stuff down there. And then the countertop, uh, the countertop is a half inch piece of plywood on top of, a uh, a piece of no, it's a half inch piece of plywood and then on top of it is a half inch or a three quarter melamine sheet. And then I just painted over it with this stainless steel appliance paint. So this appliance paint is meant for, um, it's meant for like refrigerators and, and uh, stoves and things to give them a stainless finish. And so that's what this is. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but it's basically, it's got a shiny kind of a stainless finish. And then I got some uh, stainless edge trim. Everything you see in this bus, nothing is what it's supposed to be. Um, I've, you know, kind of went through Home Depot and just bought a bunch of random stuff and repurposed things to kind of, you know, fit my, my needs. So anyway, uh, this has got like a little stainless edge piece here on the lip, which I think just kind of gives it a cool, you know, little bit of detail. Kind of helps keep things modern. And then these are screw caps. So these are stainless steel screw caps. So these are the screws I used, you know, to secure this trim piece, but it's got these little finished pieces on it, which is just, again, kind of a little modern contemporary thing. Got one here, got one here, got one back there. So I have a whole nother pack. I need to replace all these. These screws, um, I didn't, when I built this whole shelf piece, I didn't have enough of these stainless screw caps but I do now. So anyway, I need to go through and change all these out, but one day. So, um, so moving on, that's kind of the wall panel back. Here's the bed area. I wanted it to be separate. So I built this little floating wall. Uh, you can see it doesn't, you know, connect up at the top. There's a, you know, air pass through at the top, but I did trim. I kind of trimmed out a little doorway. And so if we look in here, this is the sleeping area. I went ahead and put hooks up on the side of the wall so I can hang stuff. I got a backpack hanging here. And then I kind of use that for like storage. Um, you know, like, it, like I have my headphones here, my earbuds, I have to keep some books in there. Anything I might want when I'm, you know, like while I'm sleeping, I have um, my eyeglasses I keep in there, that type of stuff. My phone while I'm sleeping, I keep my phone up there. So um, it's just kind of almost like a little pocket that I can keep stuff in. I uh, got a little window uh, above the bed that I can open for some good airflow. And this bed, it's a full size bed. I bought it off Amazon. It's one of those mattress in a box. And uh, it wasn't the, it wasn't the very cheapest, but it was pretty close. Um, I think it was only 130 bucks and it's a six inch. No, it's not. It's a four inch. Is it four or six? I don't remember now, but it's a memory foam, you know, the roll up type. I think it might be a six might be a six anyway. Um, so that worked out pretty good. It's actually been really comfortable. I slept on it every night for a few months now and haven't had any issues. Um, in the back, this window covering, I bought that at Ikea. So those are super cool. I got one here and I got one here. And, uh, so that just kind of helps, you know, keep the privacy. It's pretty cool. You can just pull the bottom and then the whole thing rolls up, um, rolls up on its own. I'll show you. So if you just grab this, then it rolls up, bam, right? Pretty cool. And so you can see, uh, it lets quite a bit of light in with, uh, lets quite a bit of light in if you have that open. So anyway, it's nice to lay in here some mornings and uh, you can just look outside and you can see, you know, wherever you're at, if you're somewhere pretty, you can lay in bed and look outside. But if you're stealth camping, which I do a lot of city camping and you know, that type of thing. So then you just obviously pull that down. You don't want anybody looking in on you. Um, and then on this side, I got another backpack. That's all my camera gear. And this is a big, this is the wheelchair door. So this opens from the outside. And then I'll show you guys later. You can access the bottom of it. 
Um, the bus came with an air conditioner. It doesn't work. It, it electrically it turns on and it runs, but it doesn't cool. So um, I'm probably just going to remove it. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to keep it. And then move into the ceiling. This is the original emergency hatch, um, you know, for the school bus and or for the shuttle. And I actually like it a lot. It lets a lot of air flow. So if I just pop it open, I get a really good breeze. If I open the, I usually leave that top piece open and then I leave my side door open and I get a really nice airflow through here. So um, that's actually really cool. I, I like it a lot. And then I did add a max fan. So I cut this max fan in um, just because I wanted something where if it's rainy, you know, if it's rainy at all, you can't leave this hatch open because water just comes right in. So I wanted something that I could still run and vent, especially if I'm cooking, um, that I could vent while it's raining. So I added the max fan and then, uh, I guess I'll jump back really quick to this countertop. This is a cutting board. Um, a lot of people think it's like an induction cooktop, but it's not, it's just, uh, um, it's just a, what do they call it? Tempered glass. It's a tempered glass cutting board. So I cut all my vegetables and food on there. And then this is a, a propane stove, single burner stove. So I, you know, can heat a pot of coffee or heat, uh, cook some soup, whatever on here. I don't use this as much. I usually honestly use my instant pot for almost everything. So 90% of my meals I make in the instant pot. And then, um, I use the propane sometimes. So I have it at least if I need it. And then I will just mention, I added an electric electrical outlet, 110 outlet, and that comes right off the inverter here. You can see right here. Um, here's the wiring for it. So the inverter, you know, it has the three plugs on the front, the regular outlets, but those are limited to like seven amps, I think is the most you can draw out of those. But if you hardwire it like this, and then you go to a GFI box, you can get, I think up to 14 amps you can run without it tripping. So that's why, you know, I used to wonder why people did that instead of just plugging right into the inverter. And now I know after reading the instructions, if you hardwire an outlet, you can pull a lot more juice out of your inverter. Um, and then I'll also show you guys down in the bottom here. Um, here's some more electrical. I do have a, this is my only battery. It's a 200 amp hour Renogy AGM battery and it works really well. In my last build, I had a 200 amp hour sealed lead acid and this battery, I noticed it just, it's way better. It holds the charge way better. Um, this battery almost never, right now I'm getting sun, but um, this battery almost never drops below 12.8. Um, when I have my 200 amp hour battery with my sealed lead acid battery, um, you know, it would go down to two, five, two, six, quite a bit. So, but this one never below two, eight. So it's definitely a really good battery. And for what I do, I think 200 amp hours is a really solid, you know, amount of solar. It's or a, a amount of electricity. It's a good amount to start with. Um, and for a lot of people, you might not need more than 200 amp hours. And then that being said, I do have, um, I do have 320 Watts of solar on the roof. And I'm going to try to climb up here just so I can show you guys. Let's see. Just climb up here. Boop, boop. <sighs> All right. Yeah. So there you can see my max fan. And here's my solar panel. Um, I bought these. I bought this panel from uh, Santan Solar. And uh, I've had it for a few months, on for a few months, and it works awesome, guys. 320 watts. It only cost me like 130 bucks. Um, it's like a factory blemish. Everything works fine, but the guy was saying there's something wrong with the, like the way the cosmetically the cells look. I have no idea, uh, but I don't care. <laughs> it works for me. It's been an awesome piece. So um, 320 watts of solar and a 200 amp hour battery. And, uh, for me, that's like, that's like the perfect combo, um, down underneath the bed, this is all storage. So everything underneath the bed is a big open storage space. Um, I do have the plan to actually build with wood, like a nice, a big drawer system that has, you know, nice slide out drawers, but I just, I don't know. It's not a priority right now. So that's something I might do later. And, uh, or I might hire someone to do it. Honestly, woodworking isn't my favorite, so I might just hire that done. But the way it works, this has my clothes in it. Some uh, electronics, some more clothes. 
And then over here, this one's all like spices and cooking stuff and food stuff. And then these slide over. So if I slide that over, I have a bunch of, a bunch more stuff in the back. Um, I have Rubbermaid tubs full of extra clothes and food items. Um, in the back, I have a five pound propane tank. This right here, this is my portable potty. Um, so I can slide this over more and then the potty slides out and you can use it and then just put it back. Uh, it works really well. I like it a lot. And then uh, this is a, an extra six gallon fresh water. It's a backup fresh water. And then over here, which I'll show you from the other side, I have my primary six gallon fresh water and then a six gallon gray water. So I can carry 12 gallons of fresh water with me, which uh, usually is enough to last a couple weeks. Uh, okay. All right. And then moving over to kind of the sink area. Uh, this is my sink. It's got, I got this cool strainer basket off Amazon. By the way, guys, pretty much everything in this bus is from Amazon. So if you see anything you're like, or you're curious about, it's all from Amazon. So this is a little sink drainer basket I can put in there, use it to wash out veggies and put my dishes in after I wash them. Uh, a little bar sink again off Amazon stainless. Uh, this thing is really cool. This faucet is flexible, which I really like. So, you know, if you're you want to get it low to wash your hands or bring it up high to fill a tall pot. You can flex it however you want. And then I have a foot pump right here that supplies the water. It pulls the water through this hose out of my fresh water tank. And then the pump pushes it up. It goes up that back hose and out the top. So you can see I'll hit it right now. That's just with the foot pump. So water comes out super easy, really convenient. I like it. It doesn't require electricity. And then underneath, uh, this is my faucet. I'm sorry, not my faucet, this is my drain line. It goes into a trap and then over into the gray water tank. This is just a bunch of miscellaneous, my toiletries bag, some paper towels, my Nutribullet. I think everybody that lives in a vehicle has a Nutribullet. I can't believe how many of them I see on videos. Um, but anyway, laundry detergent. So just kind of some miscellaneous stuff here. Uh, moving over, this is my fridge, my winter fridge. Um, really happy with it. I had a upright fridge before I had the Dometic CRX 50 upright fridge, but I, I figured out, I, I couldn't figure out the reason why all the 12 volt fridges are chest style instead of the, you know, the upright with the regular handle. But I realized on the chest fridges, you can pack way more stuff into them. So like, we'll look in this now. Um, you know, with a, with a traditional fridge, you know, when you open the door, if you have stuff stacked up, it'll fall out. And especially if you're going off road and, you know, bumping all around, everything will rearrange. And then when you open the front door, stuff's liable to come falling out. But with the chest freezer, because the lid's on the top, gravity holds everything in place. So you can pack it up, you can fill it with fruits and vegetables, and then you never really have to worry about, you know, stuff spilling out. And you can really pack it and take advantage of all the space within it. So... I definitely like the cool thing too on this fridge is these baskets come out so you can open the fridge and just grab a basket and uh, and take it out. So a super cool fridge. I bought this one because uh, they have a really good rating and they've been around for a long time. Winter is the brand. Um, I was looking on Amazon when I bought this back in December of 2019 and they had a lot of cheap stuff on, on Amazon that was tempting. It was from China. Like this fridge is normally like, I don't know, like 600 bucks, but they had, you know, they have Chinese stuff that's like three or 400 bucks, uh, or no, it's like two or 300 bucks. But you know, my thought was, you know, I don't, I don't want to buy a cheap China piece and then end up, I'm out you know, on the BLM land somewhere and the fridge goes out, you know, cause I bought something cheap. So I was like, you know what? I just want to spend the money and get something reliable that I know is going to work. So that's been a great running unit. And then also this is my uh, propane heater. I really love this piece. It is awesome. Uh, I have it turned off right now cause it's, you know, basically summer down here in Yuma. It's not that cold, but um, the cool thing about this, it has a thermostat one through five. So versus like the buddy heaters just have like a high low and they run forever. But this one, it's got a pilot with a temperature, with a temperature setting. So you can light it and then put it to like, say, you know, one or two 
and it'll maintain a low temperature and then the pilot will automatically light the main burner or turn it off again. So, you know, you don't, it's, it's kind of nice cause you can set it low overnight if you want and it'll just keep the bus a nice, you know, comfortable temperature and it doesn't use a lot of gas. So super cool. This is a blue flame, uh, propane stove. No pro. I don't know what they call it. Honestly, blue flame propane heater, I guess. Uh, but it took me a long time to find this. I found it on eBay. It was not on Amazon. Amazon doesn't sell these. Uh, pretty hard to come by, honestly. But this is a super cool unit. Um, and then just doing a backup here so you guys can see how things look. Uh, the wall here has a layer of insulation. And then this uh, wall panel that I got from Home Depot. And then it's got the same type of blind as uh, the window in the back. So I'll pull it there. And then you can see, oh, there's a, uh, you know, you get a nice view of the outside. Look at that mountain. That was absolutely awesome. So got the uh, window curtain there. And that's pretty much it for the inside. The whole front of the bus is kind of untouched. Um, you know, it's got their normal bus door piece up here. I didn't pull any of this. Look, it's still got the no standing in front of the line warning. So, um, I haven't really done any work on the front part of the bus. I'm just, I'm cool with it now. At some point I might go through and redo all that and add stuff. Maybe the other thing I'll note it mention is I had to build this bus fast. I only had 30 days to get it, you know, livable. And then I spent the next 30 days kind of touching it up. But so I didn't do the floors. The floors are original. It's just the original rubber, you know, commercial flooring, which honestly, I'm cool with it. I mean, it's pretty heavy duty. It's in decent condition. And, uh, you know, of course, some nice wood flooring would have been fancier and a little prettier, but um, I didn't have time for it. And I don't really care. <laughs> I put rugs down. And, it, you know, to me, it looks awesome. So kind of an overview of my bus. These are the original lights it has one, uh, two, three, and then there's one in the back corner. And then what I did, these lights all normally ran off a switch on the dash. But what I did is I just went ahead and added uh, individual switches for each light. Because if you have them all on at night, it's like ridiculously bright. So I just have a switch. And then usually at night, you know, when I'm just hanging out making food or working on the computer, I only turn on this one. And it's plenty of light to, you know, light this whole area. So anyway, that's kind of the inside outside of the bus. Sorry, it's all blown out. This video, this double take video app I'm using isn't really that exciting. Isn't that good? Okay, so if I open the door nice and big, let me lock it real quick for you guys. Okay, that locks the door in place. So you can see, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you can see underneath here is all storage. That's the bed up on top. The bed is, uh, it's about six and a half feet wide or six and a half feet long. Uh, no, I think it's almost seven feet long and then, uh, four and a half feet wide. And, uh, you can see again, kind of looking up in there, but, uh, it's basically what it looks like. And then underneath here is all storage. So I got, you know, Rubbermaid tubs, a chair, backpack, extra sleeping bag. Here's my water. So it's just two of these six gallon tubs side by side. Um, this one has the fresh water, has the, it connects to the pump, and then this one's just the drain line that comes out of the sink. So real simple setup, but um, plenty of storage. Having that, you know, six feet or seven feet by four and a half feet of storage underneath is really nice. So just makes it, look how big that opening is. You can put a lot of really big stuff in there pretty easy. And then one of my favorite things, I gotta say my favorite thing about this bus is how much it opens up. I mean, I can lay back here Look at this, guys. <clears throat> oh, I can lay back here. Look at that view of the mountains. I can see the mountains. I can see the desert over there. It's pretty beautiful. This is kind of just not a bad life. <laughs> so... Honestly, I think that's it for the tour, guys. I, uh, I'm i just going to lay here and kind of just relax and listen to the sounds of nothing and uh, just kind of enjoy the scenery of the mountain. This is super beautiful. So this is my bus. 
a 2000 Ford 7.3 liter power stroke turbo diesel. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the interior. If you have any questions, message me or leave a comment. And that's it. I'm going to relax right here. See you guys later.